Hello everybody and welcome back here on the Heroes Lounge main channel. We are back with the Mythic Championship. Karis is still with me. Now we also have another guest coming in. He just woke up. He hopefully had enough coffee. It's going to be coffee himself. Hello everyone. Uh, unfortunately, no, I haven't had any coffee, so we'll see how we do. But we are in for a rematch of uh, Winners Final. This time, that's a five, so... See if the side of Skog support are going to be able to pull it off this time, or maybe Hazu really just does win these every day and will win once again. We are going to go straight into the map pick and ban I and it's basically just a case of the teams know what they don't want to play on, so Hazu will ban away Ultrak and BOE, while Skog support banning away Braxis and Tomb. We will be starting on first Sky Temple. But keep in mind, Team Hazu came in from the winner's bracket. They came in with the choice of the first map. And the choice of first pick or map pick. They decided to go for first pick and Sky Temple. And that even before the map bans happened. So they choose Sky Temple as the one map they really want to play in this best of five series. Keep in mind, best of five series. So get ready for a long evening. Possibly. <laughs> Yeah, and I think some of these players are even going on to CCL afterwards, so... Uh... Uh, in the first series of CCL tonight, I think it's only Ultra Risk playing with, CC with SSK. But correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, well, they're playing against Chili Mountain, aren't they? So that would also be quite a few other guys on Skog support. Gaona, Gia, and their girls all playing for them, so... We are jumping into the first draft of this series. Guy Temple, anything you expect from this map coffee? Well, we've seen in the winner's final game, there was a bit of playing around with the Lost Vikings, so that's something we might see return from Zvan. Apple also got to play that game, so... Both heroes are really strong on this map, just large global presence. Certainly a large map, and... They tend to get banned out as a result. I mean, especially we see on the side of Team Hazu, Hazu himself, of course, he's well known for his Vikings game play even back in HEC days, people banned it against him. And now he also showed off his ever for a gameplay before, so definitely something to look out. Oh. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was, I was expecting to see a Vikings and an Abathur ban. There you go, oh, there's yeah. the Abathur not allowing any of that nonsense. Uh, because they saw that Towers of Doom game earlier with Dino on Tracer and Hasu on Abathur. And uh, that was, that was rough. I think everybody's happy to see these two heroes banned away. It can be quite, uh, well, the, the very large influence on the game completely change what the teams want to do. So we'll be having a relatively normal game by Sky Temple standards, by looks of things. Right wing going to be the other ban by Team Hazu and Skog Support. I'm, I'm guessing they're going to be banning something along the lines of a Medivh or Cassia. There you go. Is Medivh open? Yeah, it does leave Medivh open. Um, I'm Tracer as well and Diva. So there's a lot of potential power picks early on in this draft. They have gone for that Medivh. They buy Ultra, let's care. Not surprised, both Ultra and Hazu are really good Medivh players. And the heroes, quite frankly, bastard. So makes sense to veil lock that straight away. It means that. Skog Support get their choice of a litter, and we're seeing they're already going for the. Triple Bruiser style that some other teams have been doing recently with the newly buffed W Sonya build. So it will be Diva and Sonya taken for them. We saw it already by them picking up in the first game in the last series, I believe it was, with the early Diva and Sonya pick. And then following it up with, uh, I believe it was Diablo as well as the main tank in that game. And so Stukov and Orphia are the response picks from Team House. I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of this. Orphia is really good at munching on the frontline bruisers as long as she is able to not be stunned, not be stunned, anything like that. So as long as they're able to protect Dino, it should be a really fun game for the anime waifu as Garage gets banned away by the side of Skogzapur. Especially as it's Dino on this Orphan, it's one of the very nice 3D, very, very 
rarely, but it's really nice to watch seeing him on the orf showing off his mechanical skill on the Euro, not missing a lot of skill shots, and therefore getting all those cool reductions, especially on the Q, going in there, stealing a ton of damage. In the meantime, Team Hazu banning out DTC, making sure he does not have the knockback against Orphea, Medivh, and Stukov, interrupting their stuff, and pushing people away from the portal, but also having the marsh. It's a potential really scary tool that if you walk through a portal and then there's a marsh on the other side, you don't want to walk through the portal. Lucio and Merlin selected now by Skog support. So it is that triple frontline that we were expecting. No Sonya main tank or any shenanigans like that. And the Merlin will be nice as a frontliner that can interrupt all of your spells. So maybe going to just be able to delete and try and burst down. But of course, that's what Medivh is here for. Last picks from the side of Team Hazu are Imperius and Zul, so they will also be getting a rather beefy frontline on their side. And on the side of Team Hazu, we have X-Ray drafting for them probably, so Imperius Zul was always a kind of a field heat special for them. Just seeing it coming in here again with the Medivh together is such a nice combo to see, because those people know how to play the combo and it's really really good to see them. Doing this, but also with the triple frontline on the side of Skog support, they're really opening up Forge here with a lot of DPS picks Victory for him. For the they opt for the Sylvanas, and again, this is another interrupt for Orphea, but they perhaps have tunnel vision too hard on this Orphea pick. And I'm looking at this team we have here from the side of Team Hazard, they're all really durable when you consider that they have two supports of them, the Imperius and the Zul are very. They're gonna be very difficult to kill for what's well, only Sonya and Sylvanas as your damage dealers, so I think Team Hazard can be very happy with what they've able to pick up here. From the Skog support is going to take quite a, a few times they're gonna to have to catch out these members if they are going to look to win this game. Especially on Sky Temple, it's always a map where you Kind of try to get an early advantage, especially in structures, and then just try to snowball it towards the end. And we shall see if either Team Hazard or Skog support will manage to do this. Later on, force your opponent into stupid stuff. Force them into, I don't know, a throw, throw pit, boss call, or something really scary when you're a talent tier town down, or something along those lines. Loading into this and game, well, number one. So it's possible we see some. Very early aggression from Silas Gog support now. It is Azul, so pretty good at clearing this waves so will be difficult, but if they can get a 5v4 somewhere, that might be a good way for them to start this game. But yes, we're now we're at game one. I'm gonna give it over to you, Carries and Coffee. Okay. Players, viewers, friends. Welcome to game number one in the grand final of the Heroes Lounge Mythic Championship. And of course, your teams here on the left. In blue, it's Death Knight, it's Ultralisk, Dino, and X-Ray. It's Hasu winning this every day. Make some noise for them in the chat. And on the right side is the challengers trying to have another crack from the losers backer. It is Gog support. Zven will be playing Sonya, Gia playing Sylvas, Gauna Gunner playing the Lucio, Skogs playing Diva, and Burgo playing Muradin. Now, nothing too crazy is going to start off this swamp, but Sonya not showing her talent yet. It's possible we are, there we are, going to see a Fierce Blow come out. It will be the newly buffed slam build from the Sonya going to have that quite nice burst damage. We'll see if maybe they can find some picks of that later on in the game. Yep, and uh, Muradin with the, the, the perfect storm talent also going for the more damage there at level one that we saw um played against them in uh, in their last game in the lower bracket there so definitely prioritizing that damage on the muradin of course that requires stacking it and that requires hitting so typically less of slightly less of a pv style talent although skulls getting jumped here at the bottom line bottom lane the silence and the roots absolutely devastating here the roots from zul into the zutskukov silence but the mech did go down but diva got away and so we've seen that Imperius is taking the offline, so you get to have Zul and Zukov together in the 
Rotation, which means they can have some pretty disgusting point and click crowd control as we saw them. Not really much that Sko could hope to do about that one. Um, this is, the whole thing is going to continue here, so we'll see what Skog's are going to be able to do to counter this strategy we see coming up from Hazu team. They've gone for the early Bruiser camp, so can expect X-Ray to rotate up, get that defense going, and see what they're able to do there. Yeah, so we will see what they are able to do. As, I mean, the Zool obviously gives a lot of macro potential here for the side of Skog, uh, for the side of Team Hasu, but they aren't able to clear this camp pretty easily as a result. So, yes, there's some a little bit of pressure in the top lane. <laughs> You've got to be careful there, by the way. That's Duke of Silence will stop him jumping until he can walk out of it. Dirkle will step to the side now. There's a stun on the diner from Yodin, but Gia is not in any position to contest it. So caught out here on the Sylvanas and Mediv and Orphia Chase and secure themselves the first blood in the, in the grand final. Just trying to do the smoke and mirrors gameplay as Gia get away from the portal, but ends up walking into Dino, who says, thank you very much, going to get that one, no problem. Now, Virgo possibly looking for an invade. Hazu is here to protect X-Ray, but he's got no health, so once this bone shield goes down, it's probably lights out for him. So now Dino's here though, and Orphia on a point fight is quite terrifying to deal with. And there goes X-Ray. Let's go trying to use self-destruct to survive. Hazu will not get protected for it. And we're having all our brawl over this bruiser camp and you don't want to take on Orphea the point contest that will not end well. Orphea and Stukov are attacked. Someone probably has to tell support that bit because now they're all dead. As yeah, I mean that, that was first objective. And Death Knight on the Stukov just sat in the side with the silence with the silencing arm onto the point, and there's nothing really that Skog support could do about that. And that will allow them to get an early lead on this double temple phase. Stukov in the mid there. But of course, Gunner on the Unusio waiting to come in and slow Death Knight with the dash there. And Gia going to put the damage as well. They get themselves a kill, bringing it up to four kills. The two, but look at that invade with the portal at the top lane. Under the fort, here goes the team of Hasu to catch themselves that Sonya kill using the portal to secure the kill. A nice play to get the Stukov kill, but traded back by Hazu's team with that portal dive. So. It will be the blue team getting the good end of the first objective. Uh, pretty interesting talent we have here. It is a Ravenous Hunter being ta taken by Orphea going to be stacking up that chomp damage. Not something you see often ever since the very early Orphea balance patches when this town got significantly nerfed. And we'll see how many stacks he's able to get. They are getting quite a bit of push, so... Might be a bit difficult for Orphea to access the mini waves. And speaking of Orphea, perhaps being called out here, the, D the Diva's here to help though, so who am I getting? You can't kill Orphea quite that easily. Now, Hazu goes in with a spear, not able to connect, but everybody survives. And I think Hazu team can be happy that they're still up a full level. And probably just going to get level 10. They can maybe even just run with a boss at that point. Yeah, I think yeah, they, Hazu's team is going to look for level 10 as soon as they can. I don't know if they will be able to go boss because the only boss damage they have really is Orphea and it might not be fast enough to deal with any pressure if that if that comes in from the side of Skog support. Mjordan got to be cautious here. He jumps out to safety. Portal though to follow. This is the difficulty of escaping against the Medivh team. Now he's going to get rooted as well. Yep, and that's the level 10. Skog gonna use the use the diva mech to try and push away some members of hasu's team but they're just gonna get caught again the portal could come out here to chase on the fort but then no they're just gonna be happy with that one kill and of course the siege camp and still kind of just crushing them everywhere they go uh, team hasu just doing whatever they feel like doing and right now they feel like getting this bottom fort so with the help of four giants they're gonna get that no problemo Azu doing his best to defend top lane. He finds two people with a spear, so 2v1, no problem, says Imperius. Um, Swall's gonna go down, but that's just about it. Now, Virgo with a Haymaker might be the placement they need to deal with us all for you. Now, Hazu, perhaps caught out, but Ray Line is there. Angelic Armament is there, and we're having a bit of a 3v3 since Dino has arrived. 
Gauna trying to find that house of kill, but not going to be able to do so. No, they're going to back off. I mean, what a ley line. What a ley line. I, I mean, I don't think Skog Support Cup saw that coming. They really wanted that kill onto Hasu, but the ley line completely denied it, stopped them from chasing any further. The Haymaker is slightly surprising to me because, you know, the portal will allow somebody who gets Haymaker out of position to come back very quickly, potentially. I think what the, their plan, Burgle's plan on Muradin here, is to Haymaker after the portal has been used to Haymaker somebody away from the portal so they can't escape. But that might be tricky to execute in practice as they warm up for this bottom fight. So goes in next, flirting with Hasu, trading a little bit of blows there on the temple phase. Burgle wants to throw out the hammer, gets it onto Medivh. Of course, Medivh is on 34 out of 40 stacks. If Medivh dies, they could lose, but the problem is Diva has gone down already. Sven goes in, spinning to winning, and comes the damage from all, but they use the portal to switch Aru and just bait Sven into a slightly different position. Now they're putting out the clap from Orphea, puts a bit of pressure on to Muradin, and he's got a jump, but he doesn't have Avatar. Lucio is there with the heal. We'll keep Burgle alive and now with the help of the trade, but Sven in the backline completely on his own. And meanwhile, there's a complete 1v1 going on between Gia and Dinah. And Dinah on the Orphea is going to win that trade. And Burgle is going to have to get out of here sharpish. But Dinah was waiting, waiting at the exit. He's barricaded the exit and he's going to clean up. This is an absolute car crash right now for Scubs Kapoor. It is everything that could go wrong, did go wrong. And... The beneficiaries of it are Hazu and friends going to get three easy kills on the objective now. Death Knight going to finish off the temple. X-Ray even able to defend the top lane during all of it. And uh, it is so good for them now. Two and a half levels up. This game feels like it's spiraled completely out of control for Skog Support. And unless a major blunder comes out from Hazu's team, you would not be surprised if they win the game from here. Yeah, the, the challenge is on top of the two level, two and a half level lead, it's also the two and a, two and a half fort lead that they have. Um, and on, on Sky Temple, structures are absolutely everything because, of course, they can just, you know, Hasu don't, Hasu's team is ahead of talent, but they don't even have to take a fight if they don't want. Now they, now Skog Support wants to kill Dino here, but they're protected from Medivh and the silence from Stukov absolutely shut it down. And now there's no running away from this team because the portal is there. Normally when you've got a Lucio driven team, it's kind of, you're, you have the, the better ability to run away or to chase. But here with this Medivh, and they're so razor sharp at using it here on the on Hasu's team, that they, it just allows them to chase and kill the moment they start winning a fight. And now they're three full levels ahead. They're going to get the boss and probably a sizable part of the next temple phase. And it's looking very, very difficult now for Skog support. Uh, well, it was looking pretty difficult in the first place. So many things would have had to gone right for their team composition to work. And that's before you consider this lead that we have here now. Death Knight and Fence looking to find Gauna will hit him with the way to pastel. Very nicely done. Lucio goes down. And we might just see an end attempt here with this boss. X-Ray picking up the Giants for good measure. Dino looking to find someone with the Jaws. Not going to connect though. Doesn't matter though because Death Knight can always just hit a root. Goodbye, Sonya. And absolute steamroll from Hazu's team. By the looks of things game on now. We do see the Playmaker come out and it does exactly what it needs to. All figures down, so... They might have bought themselves one more chance here have the Cyber's Goals before. Yeah, so that's a good, it was a, it was a crucial Haymaker and indeed Burkholt did wait for the portal to be already down before using it so that Dino couldn't be saved with it. But the problem is it doesn't buy them anything except saving them the game because they still are down oh, all the structures Oh, it's still absolutely terrible for them, for game state. They're going to trade out the temples here, which is so good for Hazu's team because, well, they are they're up a lot in the fort department already. They're free for us up, so if you're trading, then Hazu's team will probably accept it. Now, they're not even going to be satisfied with just that by the looks of things. Now, they line will be interrupted, so nobody going to get caught out for the time being, and it will indeed just be that trade, so... 
So I suppose might get a fight with level 16, but it looks like they might be looking for something a little bit earlier. Leyline seal comes out though, so... Okay, it didn't follow up with the skewer. I'm slightly surprised. I was expecting that to be an engage attempt from Hasu when he's back. Prevents it. And now we're having an all-out fight though. Think, looks like Sourceball think this is their best chance. And they will find Death Knight, but at what cost? They've already lost Sonya, they've lost these, so Gia actually not going to get auto-attacked by Ultralisk. A little bit of an interesting situation there. Now Gia looking to turn it around, but oh. really going completely <laughs> wide though. And Ultralisk will secure that kill in the end. Brutal. I think, of course, yeah, I mean, Ultralisk knew that whoever were hit first on their opponent there between Gia and Ultralisk was going to get the kill. And of course, they dodged the winning arrow. <laughs> got the bit of, uh, off. Beautiful. It's, these guys are good fans. They're just having a little bit of fun at the moment. Go uh, taking the easy way out via the siege giants. By the looks of things, you love to see it. And in the meantime, up in top lane, Gauna will actually manage to survive for the time being. Because then trying to spin to win, but I don't see much winning happening for Skull Support in this game. Hazu with another spear going to try and finish off this. Annoying Sonya will do so in the end. Leyline seal onto Gauna. That's another kill and the game is probably not far away. Yeah, this is not going well for Skog Support in game number one. Gia will wave... No? Oh, baits it. Baits it because of course Imperius was going for the skewer. I think, I think Skog Support know at this point that their fate is sealed. There's no coming back in this game for them. In comes has to win these every day. The clap's there to secure the final two kills. It's almost certainly the game is going to be GG going over to has to win these every day in game number one in the grand final. But it is a best of five. And let's see what they can do and get in the next games. Yeah, and well, there are definitely two reasons that how's the team won that. Number one, they executed very well so many individual outplays happening in that game, but number two, there was, like, I'm not going to sugarcoat this, there was enormous draft difference. There no way to fight for Orphia. Sylvanas does not do damage until level 13, well, anywhere near enough damage that is, so I feel like if you're scope support, you need to realize this, just mental reset, go into game two and try and find something that you have to do. That was, of course, the map pick and the first pick for houses, so it only gets easier from here, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. it's a really, really strong showing there from Team Haas, immediately showing why they won against Skok Support in the winner bracket, but also immediately showing why you should always ban Medivh against a team like them. They have Hazeops and they have Ultra Disc. Like, those are two really scary Medivh players. I think we just saw it in this game. Ultra Disc with those portals and the team combination. It was just amazing to watch on the viewer side. It's not even just if they have excellent Medivh players, they can use the Medivh well. Dino is a player that loves to play these heroes that scale well when given resources like Orphea, like Vala. Wouldn't be surprised to see other hyper characters come out later on. We've already seen Tracer, so when you have both someone who is excellent with Medivh and someone who loves playing with Medivh, you, you can't let this hero through. You just have to bite the bullet in ban phase and remove that one. And one just going over towards Team Hazard, definitely. But this also leaves us now with Skog Support having the choice between that pick or first pick. And they decided to go for the first pick, so we see Team Hazard with the map choice, and they will bring us towards the long time launch favorite in front of Shrines. We will see what Skog Support are able to do here. In front of Shrines, one of the more standard maps, there are a few. Poker strategies can bring out, but we're probably going to just have a handshake agreement to take play battles of your standing game by both sides, going to try and fight around with the objectives. So, if Soul Support can win here, then there is a good chance for them in the series, but if they were to drop this one, then we might be on the route to fear. But getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here, see if maybe there's something in store for us on this map. We did see. Yesterday in the Legendary Cup, a few Alex Straza games on Infernal Shines as I recall, so maybe we have some more fun heroes on the way. Definitely a possibility there. 
Especially when we look at today's game so far. We already saw a few Ragnaros coming in, which is also a special pick for the Infernal Shrines. And we also saw, especially in the earlier series, not so much in the later last two series so far. We saw a lot of focus onto the Tychus. The Tychus with the Odin is also another hero, like the Alexstrasza Dragon, not like the Ragnaros Molten, Co Molten Core. But you can't just stand there and do a lot of uh, Shrine Minions just by the way, just by throwing some stuff at the opponent, taking down those. Tychus is indeed another one of the heroes. I feel like he's a bit overrated at the moment, but does have that similar raid boss feel while in the Odin. Of course, though, that requires level 10 to not around for the first objective, but it has the same sort of effect once that is available. It looks like the teams are ready, so we'll be getting into game number two in just a few moments. We go so, number two, bonus shrines. Yes, what do we think is going to get banned out first here by Skosapur? Medivh. They want to pick him themselves. Do they have a Medivh player? Um, I believe Gia plays Medivh, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm Sven might also can't say I'm 100% sure, but. Perhaps it's just even still better to ban the Medivh because if you're that good at playing as Medivh, you probably know a thing or two about playing against him as well. So, somewhat understandable, even if a bit unfortunate, to be banning Medivh as the first pick team. Yeah, that is unfortunate, but uh, some things have to be done. <laughs> Um, and then we may see a Diva ban to follow, but we, I mean, there's, there's, there's still a whole bunch of thing, options. I mean, also the Tracer is something they've got to worry about uh, because Dino, we saw the value of that earlier on. Um, I mean, what else might they be banning here in their second ban? It's also not, not, not only the Tracer from Dino, it's also the Junkers. Like, you play against Hazu and Dino, you kind of expect the Junkers, especially if you plan on yourself picking the Diva, which would have been a possibility. But still, Junkers is just a very scary hero. As well, Cassia, yeah, Team Hazu have so many different annoying picks they can go towards. You're not going to be able to ban them all out, so you have to let something through at least and try and deal with it. This Tyrion ban, a little bit interesting. I'm not sure the is what definitely... they have in mind with that one. Tyrion ban is definitely a target banning in this Barracle. Barracle just loves his Tyrion. And... I already showed it a little bit in the last few games. He can definitely play this hero. It'd be really annoying. But now we're going to see the first pick on the top of Skok support. Going to be the D.Va so far. So immediately securing the mech explosion around the objective. Now D.Va penalty is still sky high through the roof for them. And it's hoping for maybe something a little bit different as your number one pick. But Hazard and Death Knight are going for pretty bog standard generally good heroes for Leoric and the Hanzo. Nothing too crazy from them so far. Just picking generally good stuff. Yeah, Leoric definitely with level 20 and Tomb, just one of those insta-win heroes, but also you get a lot of with auto attacks, with the Q. There's a lot of clear around the shrines. So definitely something to look at. I'm gonna see the next two picks from this half. Skok support here again. Pick up the go down. We saw it a little bit earlier already being played by him and the Johanna as well to just make sure you have the wave like with Johanna with Johanna cooldown you just one shot waves as soon as you look at them minions need to be very scared if they're on the side of Team Hazu as I said so much a wave clear available now Gia already played with Zero on this map as well I believe it was against Hype just before so definitely a hero that he is happy to play at Tasta is the third ban here, thinking that Galna was going to play that one, or Burgot maybe, not entirely sure, as Deathwing will be banned by the Silas Gogsport, not going to see the big scary dragon this game. Well, one of the main ways, Alex Strauss are available, of course. Yeah, I mean, on the side of Team Hazard, you already see the lyrics, so you open yourself up for the Deathwing pick. Because your opponent cannot no longer pick up the Lyric, because Lyric just such a strong hero against Deathwing with all the percentage damage he has due to his train and also the Entomb forcing Deathwing to use the fly to get out of any danger. 
that ever come up? We already saw already earlier today with Deckard Diablo. Just getting in the sleep, getting in the APOC as well, sets up your team really, really good. And this time we also see the Hanzo paired up with Diablo. So, uh, Dragon's Arrow into APOC combo, post potentially on the side of Team Hanzo. A large amount of heroic synergy between these four heroes. Very nice to see from Team Hanzo. And leaving Dino to get whatever fun present he wants to as the last book. It will be. The previously mentioned Tychus as well as Anduin chosen by Skog support. So they have pretty good shrine control between Diva, Tychus, Gul'dan. These heroes have a large amount of clear and they're able to convince Team Hazu to leave whenever they want basically by pressing that buttons now. Looking to see what Dino wants to play against this and that's a fun one. Kerrigan will be the hero of choice. But it'll be Ultralisk on Kerrigan, won't it? And then, yes, they've swapped yep. and put X-Ray on tank, Dino on heal by the looks of things, and Ultralisk on Kerrigan. Ultralisk, Kerrigan, you've got to be terrified if you're on the side of Skogsapor, right? It's going to be pretty difficult as, well, they do have a, a nice amount of crowd control, but the Tychus is a relatively short-range damage dealer outside of the grenade, so... Possibly standing too close to the Kerrigan and might end about as well as it did for Tykes and Wings of Liberty going up against Kerrigan, but we will see what's able to happen here. Will Ultrask be able to have a pop-off performance? Will Skogsport be able to even the series? We will see in just a few moments. I see a little bit of a roll swap on the south of support with Gok picking up the Tykes and Berkold on the Janus, the Berkold again on the main tank. Got to play the diva before. Yeah, we are loading into game number two. And I'll give it over to you, Coffee and Karis, for the second time in this best of five series. Well, thank you, Samu, and welcome everyone to game number two in this best of five series. And on the left, in blue, we have Hasuobs wins these every day with Ultralisk on the Kerrigan, Dino on the Deckard. Death Knight on Hanzo, X-Ray on Diablo, and the namesake himself, Hasuobs on Lyric. And on the raid team, it is Skog Support 2.0, Gia playing Gul'dan, Gaunagunna playing Andrin Sven on Diva, Sko on Tykes, and Bergo will be bullying Johan over Scans, and I think very safe straight away, but Hanzo with a Q quest gets his hit onto D. We're gonna be quite happy with that one. No one needs to worry about heading up to the offlane to get that stack. Well, as this game kicks off, I I will or one day root onto Diablo, but the Kerrigan combo from Ultralisk rakes in three members of Skog Support, and they will have to be careful now. Having they nearly got themselves that Diablo kill, but Ultralisk was waiting to pounce. I was just going to tell you a little fun fact, which is uh, in this season of Heroes Lounge, Dino on Hasu, on Hasu wins these every day, was the player with the highest KDA in all of Heroes Lounge. So uh, that's uh, something that Skog Support will be very frightened of, perhaps. Um, must be difficult for them to uh, worry about, but they'll do their best. And already we see a bit of blows being traded in the top lane. And of course, a nice rotation already from Skog Support. The old man Decker maybe got lost on the way back home, sitting over by the siege camp of Skog Support. We do have a quick pause, it looks like we have lost our Death Knight here, so... Uh, I'm not a World of Warcraft player, but I do see in all his ads, the Lich King shows up, and now we've lost our Death Knight getting a little bit scared there. Uh, hope that doesn't mean anything too bad for us, but... Hopefully, we should be back into games soon enough. Death Knight, uh, indeed a long-time Heroes Lounge player in Division 1, having won it, I think, multiple times in, um, in, uh, in, 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 the, in the, in the championship multiple times, I think, in, in Meme Doors, Meme Machines, as it was known, many, many moons ago. But, uh, yes, here they are once more in Hasu Wednesdays every day. Uh, so the one nil up. I mean, the, it's got to be it's going to be intimidating now for Skog support, right? How do they 
how do they respond to that coming into the game? Uh, they they need to be in a good mental state because it's quite easy it's when you're one game down at the first game, it's not particularly close, and now you're going up against Kerrigan, it's quite easy to play overly passive if such goal score, but if you do that, then Hauser and friends will just take everything for you for free, so you still need to be willing and able to step up if they make mistakes on the side of Hauser, you need to be able to punish them because they aren't perfect, even though they're quite close and sometimes now bomb camp will be taken by Hauser and they're looking to maybe find something here, but just gonna walk it out on the side of Team Hazu. Yeah, no, and they got away uh, safely enough in the end. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, so far you're right. They can't just play super passive. They've got to, they've got to keep the momentum up. And we saw that they tried to contest that camp in the first couple, but didn't quite work out yet. But still, the game continues. Level fours are in for both teams now. They've got their level four talents rolling in. Kerrigan going for the sharpened blades, as might be expected here. Um, and she will stack that up over time. So both teams are going to go for their bruiser camp now, just before this shrine phase. Uh, probably they'll time it to, as we see Dino dancing on the left bruiser camp there, waiting to cap it for maximum impact as late as possible, just before this shrine. And it looks... Yep, so this will be the... Slight push in favor of Skulk support, I believe, because the camp will be crushing the same time. But Hazza sticks around, going to clear out the lane, so they're not going to get pushed in during the objective. Nice to see. What this means, though, is that Skulk support have the early positioning on the shrine. And Ultra's got the flank. He's looking yeah, he's for waiting in the wing. Wheel. Gets the rake, oh. but Skulk's there on the Tychus. Actually, zoning Ultra Scout. And look at that damage coming out from Diva in the pilot form. So that completely zones Ultra Scout. He's going to have to go back and tap uh, in order to rejoin this fight. And of course, has to escape by a very long route. And that should allow Skog support the, the, the space they need to pick up this first objective of the game. Getting themselves already perhaps more into the game than they were in all of game one. Signed themselves out on a much better note this time. Our Skog support getting that first objective thanks to the damage onto Ultra Square, and so it will be cleared out pretty nicely. This is only a three minute punish, so it's not going to do too much, but they will get the wall, they will get themselves a little bit of structural damage, even though there's no real XP leaders as well. Tazu taking quite a bit of damage there from Scoba will survive. Yeah, they are surviving for now. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the fort's all fine. Uh, so it, I think it's not it's not a big loss for Hasu wins these every day. Oh, in fact, X-Ray goes in, gets the flip onto Gul'dan, but the Kerrigan rig just pulls him too far and doesn't quite catch onto the spikes. So Gia's still alive for now, and of course, Burgle is going to have arrived to help the zone. He's too so, used yeah. to the NA ping. That's the excuse I'm going to give as Death Knight. Maybe also having some ping issues. It's going to once again... So there's ah. some some technical issues going on right now. Um, I mean, oh, the, it's a part of this been picked. Melting point on level seven from sort of Tyke is, is banned. Um. Yes. Yeah, so I think there may have been a banned talent picked up. Uh. And now there's going to be some. So we are going to continue. We are, we're going to proceed. Yes, back into the game. Back into the game. So, yes, so a slight XP lead now for Skog Support, who are a quarter of a level ahead at level eight and a half. Now, Ultralisk waiting in the wings, looking for the gank onto Skog here. Oh, and Hasu's rotated down as well. Tigers melts. Beautiful. And that's actually first blood, if you can believe it, five minutes into this game. But Ultralisk isn't finished. There's the raid combo. Brings in Gia, but underneath the towers can't stay long for there. And we'll have to step back. Hibbity Hoppity gets away from their property. That melting point pick perhaps putting a bit of a target on Sko's back as four members of Hazard team collapse on him and pick up that kill. Now making their way down to once again take the bomb camp. 
There's only one kill, it's not the end of World Scug Sport. Completely fine as far as this game is concerned, so... We'll see what else will happen on the next objective. But will presumably be the owner from Tyker, so... Just gonna have even more and more shine control, so... They might be able to continue winning if these shines without really having to... Take the fights beforehand. Uh, Ultra is looking to kill the mech, actually, but... Oh, Sven uses the bomb in a panic. And the bomb is wasted, and of course that means they don't have it before the, for the next Shrine phase. This is a huge loss for them now, so Sven going to need to charge up as quickly as possible, but it might not be doable in time. We will see what happens. It's now the play, possibly onto Gia, but Bless Shield onto the Decker Kane. KDA is high, but dropping a little with that kill. Now we're looking for Gallon of Gun of those. Ultras hits the Ultras gone to him and will be falling. Virgo looking to just make it out it is a one for one in the end. Hippity hoppity, Ultralisk wants more, looking for scope. <gasps> 150 HP, but look at that corruption. And of course, Decker's dead, there's no healing available for Ultralisk. Will this kill him? Oh, He's oh, just oh. fine by the looks of things, surviving on two health. <gasps> could see, it looks pretty close, you can see though, just barely the health bar goes a little bit blue. Damage over time, just not enough fan. That's a bit of a tilt if you're the Stars Go Explorer. Now, they didn't have visual on so they don't know how close it was, but... Was that single That digit? feels really bad to see. Yeah, that's, uh... That's gonna be on... That's unfortunate for Gia, but... Uh, that is what it is, so to speak. And now they will have a 5v5 on the, on the shrine. There's still no D.Va bomb, though, and that is a crucial part of how they win this. But they do have the Odin that you mentioned, Coffee, in the setup. Now, there's, there's a lot of Ruby value coming out, though, from Dino on the Deckard. That's giving a lot of space. In comes the Apoc combo onto the Diva mech, but saved by the Anduin. And now Diablo might be in trouble, but look at that Entomb from Hasu on the on the Leoric. But the Light Bomb comes in from Galmakuna, catches onto three members, the minigun coming out onto X-Ray. The sleep, the sleep's absolutely savage, and it sets up a perfect break for Ultralisk. He wants to jump onto Anduin, maybe able maybe able to get the Anduin as well, but no, they're, they're happy with the one kill they've got. Maybe they get Tychus here. Tychus tries to run. Gets out of the corner, dodges the hand, a lovely little sidestep there from Sko. But Joanna's falling low as well, they've got to be cautious here. But Gia, with the corruption, does pick up the objective, but Diablo comes back in, secures that. It's three kills here for nothing. Very tense fight there, both teams getting quite low. And Hazu wins the fight, but the Punisher will be just barely taken by Sko's support, so... Again, kind of like the first one, it should get cleared out without too many issues, and the... Game will go on, so as time goes on, you would expect that things get a lot easier for Hazu team. They do have the uh, very nice scaling with that Leog. Now, level 13, we will get to see what style of Leog build we're seeing here. Now, moving to be level 7 suggests we're going to get the regular spooky build from Hazu, not interested in these newfangled damage Leog builds that all the kids are doing as Gia. Gonna be just fine. Punisher will get cleared out and gets just another wall. Definitely taking a lot of damage though. Might not want to do that one, my mate. Yeah, so I think they're gonna be happy to uh, to retreat there. Now, with Anduin dead, Skokes of course still want this bottom camp, but they've got to do it fast before Hasu Hasu et al realize what's going on. And they have done exactly that. So nice little camp pickup there from Skokes support. They are now going to Try and clear. Okay, try and catch up XP. Sven has the bomb available, but gets pulled the bomb instead. Galvin, that's <laughs> very unfortunate timing. Yeah, yeah I think they them. A bit of um, uh, misplay coordination there, because of course, obviously Anduin wanted to save the save the save the mech before using the bomb, um, but Diva had other ideas. So Sven's going to go up, trade, continue to trade with Hasu in that top lane. Hasu does have that auto attack talent now at level 13, the Spectral Leech, that will give him a lot more self-healing uh, when- and You can see rolling. the damage that it also does in that 1v1. Sven going down to third health while Hasu not taking a scratch. So it's gonna be quite miserable now for the D.Va on the off lane now that Leog has that better dueling potential. And now it will be a uh, bottom side objectives and Four already pretty low for Team Hazu. If Skullsports can get that before this objective, it would be 
quite nice for them, but Zell 16s are right around the corner for Team Houses, so Objective will be up soon, and then they might just have a talent lead for it. Yeah, they will, I think, and that's going to be something that pro Skull will probably try and always oh, dissing in. They, maybe they can catch Zekas here, but Skull's got to be careful about that tomb. <laughs> exactly like that. Lovely sidestep there from Tychus to dodge that. Sven, though, does not have the bomb available. The mech's going to go down. I think Pilot Form Diva is going to be destroyed here. Hides a little bit in this bush. Maybe by a bit of time, but not long enough. And now, Ultra is gone to Kerrigan, chasing onto Joanna. Maybe looking for a kill, but not. Maybe, maybe, though, because there's a hands of arrow. But the triangle not going to catch yet. Very unfortunate invade attempt there, going pretty unwell for the side of Sko support. Now, Sko looks to be the target. Ultrusk's here. Ultrusk does go wide, though, but it doesn't matter. Tyke's trying to dodge himself to death. Will be able to get killed. And right before the objective comes up. The good news, though, if you are a fan of Sko support, is that the objective did spawn a little bit later than perhaps I was expecting, so they will be able to take it on an even talent tier, so they definitely get one more even fight before things have a chance to go poorly. Now, looking perhaps for the Diablo kill now, Soul Shield is used, they're using all the crowd control, but it's just Gul'dan damage, and Gul'dan does not kill demons well. That was... Hey, well, and now the collapse attempt by our own fans. <gasps> and the sleep into the apocalypse, into the combo. They're going to catch Anduin. They're going to catch Gul'dan. It's an absolute massacre here. And in the meantime, Hasu is still just continuing to, to slap Sven around the face uh, with his big mace. And uh, I'm not sure Sven enjoyed that. But yeah, I mean, that, look, they used everything trying to kill Diablo. They used the light bomb falling, sorry, the light bomb blessed shield and the horrify. And on any other target that would have surely ki got a kill. But X-Ray on Diablo there, uh, who popped the Soul Shield before it all kicked off, just lived to die another day. I don't think you need me to tell you that W build Diablo with that Soul Shield available, fully stacked souls, is not going to get killed by Gul'dan and anything approaching sh uh, quickly, so... Bit of an overstep there, rotated down after getting for top four, did Team Hazu. Found the collapse and managed to pick up the Punisher easy peasy. Now level and a half lead and pushing for the first time this game with the objective. Looking yep. now for the Diva, but has the bomb available. It doesn't matter though, they just gonna kill the pilot straight away and Tomb does not connect. So, oh, here comes the arrow tanked by Johanna. Gia will get pulled to safety and it looks like everyone else on Scott's support will survive, but the push will continue by the looks of things. Well, it was an absolutely crucial blocking of the hand arrow by Burgle because... Yeah, very if, good Johanna play. Yeah, if they hadn't blocked the arrow, that could have been on the spot uh, a keep at least because, because that would have been turned into a team up. So huge, huge value there from Burgle on the Joanna. So with that, yes, it will get a fort, but the Punisher will be cleared and there's still even talents for now. So Skog's on take a fight pre-20 and we expect to see them go hunting for a fight as quickly as they can but with only a third of a level away from level 20 on the side of Hasu, Hasu's team they will probably just hide for the remaining time and so yeah Hasu and friends can just play safe as my good friend Hasu would say just sit in the fountain when you're level 19 and a half just make it to 20 then look to make the plays but nothing's gonna happen they will just level 20 and now an invade attempt onto the bruisers. It looks to be the first point of call. It is actually going to be the perfect gems from Deckard, not going for that silencing sleep. I suppose it makes sense when they have the silencing and tomb. So, going to enjoy even more rubies coming out of this game. Going to be so much healing for the front line of Team Hazu. Going to clear out the middle for the problem. And looking now for the fight attempt. Oh wow, just going not even really into the Horrify. Oh, the Trinity might get light bombed here and may- Oh, the Cocoon! The Cocoon to dodge the light bomb is savage. The Burgle comes in from the side with the Blessed Shield. Ultralix falling pretty low, but not low enough just yet because the Corruption might finish the job. Ultralix still alive though because the potions have just about 
kept him alive and that means now Diablo goes in with the Hellgate tries to catch onto the Diva mech but no it will just be one kill but that was so nearly a kill for Skog support there considering they were down for level 20 to 18 that was a pretty good fight for Skog support things considered if they were also level 20 perhaps they win there but not quite going to happen level 20 is a little bit too good for the side of Team Hauser over there Starting a two men and whatnot, and now let's go. Looks to be the target. Hazu also pretty low, though. Might end up falling. We are going to get some trade value. Maybe Ultra just goes in with the Ultra's got to G here, but is going to go down as well. Perhaps a bit of an overstep here by Team Hazu. Live bomb. Live bomb looking for Dino. No, yeah, there's how the room. can he survive with these roomies? The answer is uh. probably a very long time, so. It's the poor roomies. Now, here comes the well. sleep. Other arrows here. Oh, Is Dino man, living here? It might be walking out of this one. Maybe. Diablo now <laughs> X-Ray come in. Is X-Ray going to be in more trouble perhaps than Deckard was? X-Ray turns oh, over, slams oh. Diva into the wall. But look at the damage that comes out. But Gul'dan died to Death Knight on oh, the side. God, the hand of tank. There's the Aiden Tomb into the APOC. The silencing and tombs causing an absolute car crash in the back line from Hanzo. In comes the Diva Bomb, might finish the job on X-Ray, but it won't it won't actually. X-Ray's got away and now spends completely on his own. Body blocked by four members of Hasu and friends. Now they're gonna get the Diva kill as well. It's three kills for that one ultra kill that they got. Oh dear. If you are scared to pull right now, you are quite possibly in mental mood. That was one of the most disgusting things I've seen for Deck in a while. Dino just getting all the movies, surviving until the feds returns. And Deck gets taken back to the retirement home protection that is Diablo. And well, now with the two level leads, they're going to pick up the top objective and look to end the game for the top four. So Arrow onto Sko, going to get the Tiger's kill. And looks like game number two looking pretty convincing for Team Hazard if they're able to win with this push. Yeah, the Tigers being dead here is a huge factor because now it's a 45 on top of everything else. Joanna might be able to bait the Punisher to the mid, maybe, but then they've still got five heroes to deal with. And Leorix and Tomb is back up. There's the light bomb though, but again dodged by the cocoon, but it does block the, the stair while and listen. In comes the silencing in Tomb. And Anduin is throwing out a lot of heals here now that the Entomb's over. Joanna's still alive. In comes the combo though from Ultralisk onto Burkle. He has the indestructible. Burkle will live for now, but Anduin not so lucky as X-Ray slams him into that wall. Hanzo is putting out a lot of damage here on this played by Death Knight. It's Fen, tries to hide in the corner. X-Ray says no, corners are great for the Lord of Terror. They want more, they want They want to get every kill as well as winning the game. There's the stay a while and listen, just for the icing on the cake. And of course, this Punisher is still marching towards this core, which is already at 66%. There go, having a little bit of fun as well, and we'll go down at the end. It is... Maximum mental damage done by Team Hazu in game two as they look to completely dominate in the end of this game. But it was looking pretty close for quite a while. Up until the later levels, the game was pretty competitive. It was really after that attempt onto Diablo there, things started turning against the side of Skull Support. Until then, it was very competitive as I said before and looked a lot better for them in game one. Now, can they recover from the very unfortunate attempt on Dino and look to give another van attempt to game three? Or is Team House just too good? What do you think, Samu? I mean, looking at this first game, it was, especially in the early games, Coxapora looked really good. Like, they got the first two punishes in or something like that. The issue was they did not manage to get something done with it. Even though they had the first two punishes, they did not manage to do anything at all with those. Which was quite the issue for them, and therefore, in the later stages of the game, team from Team Hazard just gets way better as with these old synergies they have between those five heroes on their side. Yeah, I think this was. Uh, I think I think this as uh, Skogsipo showed a lot of promise in that early game, and that's something that they've got to build on as they go into game number three, and really try 
to just bring that all the way into turning that into a game. I mean, obviously the Entomb was a big problem for them as well from from uh, from from Lyric, played by Hasu there on the, on the flank. So, difficult. Also, one thing we saw in the middle of the game, the, like, there were three ultimates used from Johanna, Anduin, and Gul'dan to try and focus down the Diablo, but Diablo is just such a healthy tank, and especially with the spell shield, like, you definitely need the Tychus to do any damage towards Diablo, and it was a little bit of a miscalculation from them. There they always stepped, and then they got punished for it, and it was... It was a little bit the turning point of that game. Yeah, I think up until that point, it was broadly neck and neck, and of course, what we've seen from Hasu's team in both game one and two is when they start winning a fight, they really know how to turn it into a bloodbath with chasing, you know, in game one that was with Medivh uh, and using those portals. Here it was using the Ultralisk on Kerrigan and the Lyric and Tombs to just keep going. Once you get, once you find the enemy slightly out of position, once you get an early pickoff or kill the Diva Bomb or whatever it is, chase, 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 turn that into three kills into four when a lesser team would have only got the one kill and then backed off and taken an objective. It is partially draft, but it also just goes to show just how good these players are on the side of Team Hazu. They know how far they can push things when they do find these advantages. So much more than perhaps Gold Support, because as you said, after those first objects, I didn't really get much. The first one, it was a very early objective. The second one, they were somewhat dead, so not much I could do, but not really able to use the opportunities they were given as Ghost Ball. So in game three, perhaps they want to go for a much more snowball comp. Sure, it might be a bit harder to find the advantage, but if they are able to do well in the early game, they might be able to snowball the game out of control, and that might be their best attempt at winning in game number three. In the meantime, let's have a look towards the map pool. As we see, we have still left out Curse Hollow, Dragon Shad, Towers of Doom, and Vosky Foundry. Now, Skoxapur has the choice between first pick or the map choice. What do you think will they go for? Coffee. Well, all of the uh, Super Snowboy maps have already been taken off field. There's no Braxis, no Battlefield of Eternity coming out in this series, so somewhat uh, low on option when it comes to Snowball. The other one that comes to mind is Volskaya. If you get ahead, you just keep getting all the items and the fights get easier and easier the bigger lead you get. So that might be one place for them to go and to try something. meantime we have seen and on both teams we have a lot of ccl players and tonight we already have some ccl games coming up as well we have skok support there were three players from side of the mountain they sadly have to go and leave for scrims now so let's see if we still can play this series out well there are three members of chile mountain on their team sko burgo and gia so that's over half a team and might just be the end of things if they have to leave at this point, which would be rather unfortunate. We'll just uh, check that yes, one. Yes, I think there might be, it might be that there's a forfeit, yeah. Um, that would be unfortunate if so. Um, so we'll see what, what happens there. We're just waiting for final confirmation on that. Um... So, um, uh, while whilst we do that, I mean, if 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 Hasu's team has won this, as, as we think they may have now, two 0 effectively. I mean, what what's the what's their secret? Do you think, Coffee? Like, what's what's the magic ingredient? Is it individual player execution, or is it the coordination, or is it the uh, the, the kind of the single target focus? I mean, what what's the what's the magic ingredient behind behind their success? There's a few reasons for it. Uh, well, first thing is that most of these guys have been playing together for quite some time, of course. Before it was 
how the wins were every day. They were they were still winning it every day on Feel the Heat, and then EPG Frozen. So these guys have been playing together for quite a lot of time. They know how they like to play. They know how far they have to push things. So it's coordination, it's individual skill, it's hero pull, it's firing on all cylinders. There's not really any weakness on Team Hazu. Um, it's really shown in these games that everyone is able to perform when needed. Yeah, I mean, of course, these are not... Yeah, you know, isn't really a secret. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's not that they're winning against, you know, noob teams here. <laughs> this is go support. You know, they, they're absolutely incredible uh, players on, on the opponent. And, you, we, you know, we were just talking about the fact that Scrooge support have three members of uh, of uh, of Chili Mountain, a CCL team, on, on their roster. So it's... Um, uh, it's it's difficult, uh, but and yet they made it look easy when push comes to shove, and so uh, it's amazing to see such incredible performance from from that team. Samu, have you got any uh, any thoughts on uh, on how Hassi wins these every day and why they've been winning these every day? It's a really really long playing team together, especially three of them are right now still playing in field together with Dino with Holistic X Ray. And also they know each other very well, they also play other different stuff together, so they're really friends. And seeing them all in CCL, it's just such a such a treat. And then them also playing together in Heroes Lounge is just them being friends and having fun together. This is like a thing which also boosts the team in in a few different ways. Unlike just being a tryhard team which only play together because you train together and you're at the same skill and after the training you're no longer you not, not no longer do something. So I think there's also this personal bond between those players, between them being friends, also something which gives them a little bit of an edge about above a few others, maybe. Yeah. Uh. So it's yeah. I mean, it it does help that level of coordination. Um. <clears throat> so. It looks like we're just waiting on confirmation of what will happen about whether we will have a game three. There's some technical, um, well, there may, there may be that maybe that's Cook support are forfeiting. We just get waiting on confirmation on that. Uh, if, it, if, it, if, if you want to play in Heroes Lounge and meet teams of this caliber, you can sign up for season 14 of Heroes Lounge, which is starting in a couple of weeks by typing exclamation mark sign up in the chat. And following the link and getting some info from our website or you can join our discord by typing exclamation mark discord and get the link there and we've got regular regular competitive heroes of the storm activity so uh we're just waiting for confirmation about what's going to happen here in potentially game three of the grand final and if we're going to have one but should be uh should be news on that very soon. And while we wait for that, just a reminder, we still have our uh, our off season, our off season, uh, off season tournament, uh, which is an ARAM tournament that's going on. I think the signups for that are closed. Am I right, Samu? Yes, on su on Sunday it's already the final day with the where we start here at thirteen. Central European time, probably. Where we exactly. See so yes. Play of the you, you can, fighting out. You can still watch it, but you can't play in it if you're not yes. in it already. But um, we will have more of that in the future. Also, if you're watching in North America, because uh, I know a lot of you do, then I believe season five of Heroes Lounge NA is currently ongoing, and. That has started as well, so signups are closed for that. But I mean, people, teams are always looking for new members mid-season, so you can't. Sorry, season six. I've been corrected. Uh, season so six. teams are always looking for yeah. uh, uh, new members. So definitely, if you if you want to get involved in North America, join the Discord. See if there's any teams looking for subs, that sort of stuff, um, or wait till next season and sign up there. I mean, coffee. We've had. I mean, we've had some some fantastic playoffs uh, at Heroes Lounge these last couple of weekends. I mean, you've been casting yesterday as well. What? 
Would you recommend people sign up for Heroes Lounge? I mean, I know you're in New Zealand, so we don't really have an ANZ region, but... Uh... We already have the Minutes interview as game number three was uh, now confirmed as a forfeit from a set of Skok support. Okay, I yep. believe we are getting uh, the winners in for an interview shortly. Just uh, waiting on... Yeah, I'm bringing them in presently. Welcome. Welcome, Hasu wins these every day. Hola. Hello. And congratulations on uh, a slightly anticlimactic climactic victory, but a convincing one nonetheless. How are you feeling? Feeling uh, great. I think this was uh, yeah, a great uh, Devon series. We defended our, our champion spot uh, again. I mean, uh, yeah, some of us, <laughs> I guess. And yeah, Hazop's uh, taking the his first Division One victory, I think. Hey, one of many <laughs> to come. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe we also have here uh, Cosmic, who is the master of Heroes Lounge, the cre it's in its creator, and he's going to say a few words. Cosmic. Good evening, everyone. And of course, a huge, uh, somewhat unexpectedly soon, congratulations, of course, to uh, Team Hazu, of course, Hazu wins through these every day. Huge <laughs> congratulations for winning the highest honor that uh, Heroes Lounge uh, can give you. So I hope you had a, a great experience despite the somewhat short last game. And I'm sure, at least uh, if nothing else, uh, Skoskabor has learned that uh, Deckard is pretty hard to kill. <laughs> uh, at least this what I saw. Um, no, huge congratulations to you guys, and I'm sure as X-Ray is well aware at this point, this does entitle you um, to win Heroes Lounge's highest quality plastic. So huge congratulations to you guys. I'm sure um, <laughs> you will be receiving them at some point, I do promise. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, a long process. We've had some ups and downs, but of course, I mean, we do also have to give it up to your opponents as well for putting on the, such a good show, even though that the series did finish early this time, you know, it's a live tournament, things do happen. But of course, it's been a long day for both the players and the opponents. And I think it's just uh, right to give them a round of applause as well for the hard work that they've put in. Uh, and of course, everyone behind the scenes. I mean, I'm sure everyone here has uh, been experiencing, has experience with all of the mods which are there helping you get into games and making sure everything runs on time. These people are donating their own time out of their nice weekend in order to make these tournaments happen, right? So honestly, I think we a uh, huge thanks to everyone who takes part behind the scenes. Uh, because I really, I honestly love being able to see these tournaments play out, and I'm so happy that I get to still watch these uh, in season 13, no less. Here's to many more seasons to come. So, yet again, huge congratulations to you guys. Please do send me your details, your uh, names, and addresses where you want the trophies to be sent, and I will leave you and the casters to enjoy your mythic championship winner's interview so congratulations guys thank, thank you. you thank you thank you congratulations from us another time of course i mean x-ray you together with Chelvin are now four times champion in a row how do you feel about it uh, yeah <laughs> i feel it's really <laughs> nice <laughs> got the four times champion in i mean uh yeah i think it's great because i get like i love Playing, I, I'm not such a fan of Storm League. I'm a fan of uh, games where you communicate. I think this is how the game is supposed to be played. And obviously, I have a lot of fun playing some off road heroes as well because uh, usually I have to support, but here I can show something else. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, for games, were, well, especially game one looked pretty convincing, but, and game two was a little bit closer. For, I mean, the main thing I want to ask is, Dino, when you were all alone as Decca Kane, were you expecting to survive, or were you just playing it out and seeing what happens? 
I never had once a moment of doubt that I would die in that moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the I perfectly know the limits of Deckard. This build is just made of... It makes uh, Deckard... Amelia Assassin. <laughs> I mean, uh, rather a full tank. It's just impossible to kill him. And also, I have faith in my German fellows backing me up. Yeah, we when give it does you get mental close. support. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So main tank Deckard confirmed for <laughs> next season. Yeah, I mean, maybe we, some CCL teams like Wildtail will pick it up. In, <laughs> yeah, uh, Somebody <laughs> to link that clip to Justin and see what they do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you all already played launch for several seasons, except for one. Came, coming in into this team for this season, Hazu, how do you feel about Heroes Launch? How did you, did you enjoy this season? What are your thoughts about all of this? Yeah, actually, I did enjoy it. it. You know, it was quite a bit different. Like, first of all, X-Ray kind of asked me out of the blue, so I didn't really know uh, what I signed up for. But, you know, playing in a full German team, um, shot calling in German, and uh, being, like, very flexible with the hero pools was actually a very uh, enjoyable season. And, um, I mean, we won as well. Um, like, we, we had a lot of fun, but we also played to win. And uh, yeah, it was it was a great season. How much experience had he had playing with these guys before the season starts, or was it just completely out of nowhere from X Ray? No, I mean I know all of them, right? And I, I played here and there with them. Um, for example, in the in-house uh, tournament or um, in in-house games in general. Um, so yeah, I'm. I mean, obviously I know them, and I know they are very talented players. So I knew. I knew what I signed up with the team, but not so much like the quality of the games overall in the league. Uh, and I have, to, I have to say, there were there were a few games that were closer than I expected. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun for sure. Yeah, we, we had uh, four out of five here from uh, the past Nexus game team Germany, which was uh, the, like, I think, Ultra Disc, Hazops, uh, me and uh, Death Knight. Uh, yeah. uh, no, it was not Ultra Disc. It was, uh, yeah, Dino. I know, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was Nick instead of Ultras. So yeah, we actually you played one game uh, with the full uh, team German roster, though. Yes. Ah, but... yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> Next season, Nick confirmed or what? <laughs> <laughs> Nick wins this every day. Uh, we, yeah. we don't, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. We, but we will come back for the fifth uh, champion in a row. That's for sure. Glad to hear it. So. Uh... Yes, well, you've still got two weeks left to sign up for next season, so have a think about it, and hopefully uh, hopefully we'll see you all again. Have you got any final uh, shout-outs you want to do to uh, the viewers or to anyone you are? Uh, yeah, your... sure. You sure? Shout-out shout to the lounge, shout-out to Cosmic and everyone else behind the scenes to make that uh, season happen. I think uh, this season went pretty, pretty smooth my opinion everything was pretty clear like uh, how how everything you know works uh, what's the map and everything it was pretty like very very smooth season and uh, yeah I uh, I would like to thank you guys for making this uh, possible because uh, I think everyone uh, from our side had a lot of fun and also a few uh, quite close games yeah Okay, yeah, uh, glad to hear it. Um, Someone else, maybe? Anyone else want to do any shout outs? Yeah, sure. A shout out to you casters as well for casting and making this whole thing uh, come to the viewers and so more people can enjoy HOTS, of course. And also, yeah, shout out to everyone of my team for playing this one. And, and yeah. shout out to Kelvin. For being Shout always there Kevin, when we need him. Shout out to Kevin, that 6th player, uh, oh, yeah, was always was, there when we were. For us. Shout out to Nick. I think Wit sub for us at one point. Gia sub. Lauber, Lauber, Lauber sub for us. Lauber sub, yeah, yeah Lauber sub. Sorry, those guys, <laughs> the lads. Wait, Shout out to Team Liquid season, for right? supporting an old guy. Alright, <laughs> 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 yeah. Surely Team Liquid sponsorship for next season. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but yeah, I mean, uh, just, I think it's great that you guys organize it, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. 
Uh, well, um, yes, thank you. Thank you for thank you for joining us. Thank you for participating, and uh, we hope to see you again. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 So, so that uh, that that brings to an end season thirteen of Heroes Lounge, Samo. Uh, yes, it definitely does. How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm really happy. I mean, people. Are... Yeah, I'm I'm really happy. This season was really smooth. Really big thanks to everyone watching. Big shout outs to everyone behind the scenes, Cosmic. Who had the initial idea, Tiny Owl, who is helping out with all the organization, all the other managers, all the other board members, just all the casters, all the moderators, even all the players. Thank you everybody for being here. Without you, we do, would not do this the way we do, and we could also not do it the way we do it right now. So thank you everybody for being here. It was a great season. Hope to see most of you next season soon again. And be, make sure you sign up your team. You still have a little bit of time. So hope, hope to see you soon again. Yep. Goodbye, everybody. And have a good evening. Bye. Bye.